Welcome to Coastal Now. I'm Robin Russell. You may have heard that 70% of Ori and Georgetown County teachers earn their degrees from CCU, but the learning doesn't stop with their bachelor's degrees. As we learn in this story, teachers, trainers, and professionals can now attain advanced skills through a master's degree in the area of instructional technology. And as you might expect, the entire program is taught online. Hello and welcome to Instructional Video Production. Uh, my name is Joe Winslow, and I have the good fortune of being your professor this session. At Coastal, we have a master's program in learning and teaching that specializes in instructional technology. The program is 100% online. And we have a lot of students that come to us from education backgrounds, they're teachers in other words, but we also have quite a few students that come to us as professionals in other disciplines. Uh, this one's where training is, is critical. We have students who are active military, we have students who are in healthcare, we have students who work for uh, government institutions, anywhere where there are uh, prof other professionals who need to be trained how to use technology or their training involves technology to improve their regular job performance. A friend of mine, actually a co-worker, shared with me the instructional technology program, um, the master's degree that with the emphasis on instructional technology and we are so technology driven and right away I thought wow that's something I can do um, especially with it being online um, and not only that it was a degree but it was one I could put to use in my classroom. I could work in private America as you know a video producer making how-to videos for products that um, the company could sell you know it's it's got a broad you know scope where I could I could do almost anything with this with this degree it's which is what's so unique about it there's not many schools that offer a program like this so it's really beneficial to me and the students that are in the program what we've learned is that at the graduate level in particular the adult learner market has changed dramatically for our target market uh, our adult learners want to take classes late at night, asynchronously, where they don't have to be locked into a particular schedule. It is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous activities, but it's 100% online, and, and that is what really, that's what really has distinguished our program uh, from previous programs uh, in the past. I was a little bit nervous about it being totally online because while I had gone back for um, classes that would you know, help me to be recertified, I'd never um, done the online experience that I've been face to face and so I was really kind of anxious about how that was going to be but the presence I felt through the online community was just phenomenal. The support that you got um, not only from your students um, that were in the class with you but the professors. Uh, there was never a time where you had a question or concern that it couldn't be addressed and you couldn't reach a professor. For anyone who's interested in learning more about the Instructional Technology Graduate Program online at Coastal, just go to our website, online.coastal.edu, and click on the link for Graduate Programs, and you'll see Instructional Technology listed there. You'll also see a link for our Facebook site, our Instructional Technology Facebook site. It's very popular, so please come visit, like us on Facebook, and uh, we, we are happy to interact with anybody who's interested. This program also offers a certificate in online teaching and training, helping educators get the skills they need and 12 course credits. One CCU alumnus has earned some high fives and tremendous credit for achieving something that many entrepreneurs dream about. Our own Megan Tarmy is one of 45,000 who auditioned to pitch her business on the sixth season of ABC's Shark Tank. She was chosen and appeared on the program in October. Her courage, coupled with her sharp business mind, gained her 10 minutes on one of the nation's most popular television shows. I'm Megan Tarmy. I'm from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Hey. My company is called The Caddy Girls. It's the first all-female golf caddying company. We provide... I started this just from scratch with, with no money, with maybe four cheerleaders and a softball player here at Coastal and was just winging it 
And now I operate in 10 different states and have 200 caddies on my roster. I would say the exposure on Shark Tank was monumental. I could never have afforded a 10 minute commercial for 8 million people to view. Um, so it was just pure luck and hard work that came through and the most important thing is persistence. Um, you know, right now 8 out of 10 small businesses fail within 18 months and that's the problem. 18 months is not long enough to determine whether or not your business is going to succeed. And while I was a very small operation for several years, I still always was persisting and always running it the way it should be run. And I think that, you know, eventually it just pays off one time or another. I always worked really hard. I always wanted to make money. You know, when I was 16, I had four jobs. I was selling things on eBay, working at the fire department, working at Petco. So I, I just always wanted to, to work. Even from the time I was like seven years old, I was running around my mother's office trying to sell people my artwork. I feel that my university helped me a lot in um, you know, giving me that drive and ambition and always being very helpful. All of my professors were so supportive of my business and helping in any way that they could. It wasn't as if the, the professors were sitting there and telling me what to do, but just the encouragement and believing in me and you know, Robin Russell always was just so encouraging and that means a lot whether you see it or not like it really makes a difference in the students lives and uh, Linda Kirkendall would make me get up in front of the class every day and talk about my business. I minored in theater, I loved acting, I loved production and directing and that was you know something that I definitely wanted to pursue as well this just kind of took over and uh, aside from that my family's always been very supportive hundred percent. Coastal will always definitely have a special place in my heart and it, the fact is that I had a great experience at Coastal, but for them to always be following up with me and pushing me, and uh, as an alumni, I'm super proud. Anyone that ever thinks about going to Coastal, I'm like, it was the best experience of my life, and uh, really just great staff, good people. We understand from Megan Tarmy that several potential opportunities have resulted from her shark tank appearance. We wish her the best. Coming up on Coastal Now, we take you behind the scenes of one of CCU's most exciting annual events to meet the most recent Sasser Hall of Fame inductee. Here at Coastal Carolina University, we're not just building dreams, we're building a future. With real hands-on experiences and a personal touch, we prepare you for the real world and real success. Connect to your future and discover what Coastal can offer you. back. Every year since 2003, an elite group of individuals is selected for induction in CCU's Athletic Hall of Fame. The images of five new members now grace the walls of the George F. Buddy Sasser Hall of Fame, located in the CCU Atkins Fieldhouse. They are retired head women's cross-country track and field coach, Alan Connie. 2006 Big South Football Scholar Athlete of the Year, Josh Hoke. Five-time Big South Cross Country Track and Field Champion, Diane Chepchurcher Mendez. 2006 All-American Outdoor Track and Field Champion, Thomas Jordan. And CCU's first quarterback to lead the Chanticleers and the first player in the Big South history to be drafted into the NFL, our own Tyler Thigpen. Let's check out highlights of the awards event. It's hard to believe it was 28 years, but um, so many memories. It's what I remember are all the people, um, the athletes, the, the coaches, the support staff, the administrators, and I'm just very grateful for the opportunities Coastal gave me. It's the ability 
to relate and, and touch people's lives. You know, the ability to have a role in the lives of all our athletes. The All-Americans and the Olympians, we've had some of those and, and they get most of the press. I just think back to all the hundreds of athletes. Uh, of course, we think back to the 28 championships. And every one of those were very special, you know. And if, it was very special last year to end a career in a very high note with the Triple Crown. This day is, is a, it's a great honor, you know. It's, uh, I look at it as a recognition. I represent those 28 years of women's cross country and track and field, and I represent all the student athletes, and it, it's a great honor for the program. There is nothing that comes remotely close to, to going to the Hall of Fame. Um, uh, the more and more I think about it, to have people look back positively on your career and say you did things the right way, you left a positive impact on a place, I don't think there's anything uh, greater than that. You know, all those uh, All-American awards, all those Player of the Year awards, all that stuff can go away. I, it doesn't matter uh, in comparison to this. This means so much more to me to, to be recognized at a place that I truly love. I think what makes this place special is the people. Uh, for me, more than anything, to get the opportunity to come back here, it's been three years since I've been back on campus, to come back here and reconnect with so many great people, uh, that's what's special to me. It's been a, a whirlwind last year, um, you know, uh, opened a business, got married August 1st, uh, and then we get the Hall of Fame. So uh, we're hoping, uh, even though it's been a great year, I'm kind of hoping things settle down a little bit. Uh, I was a communication major, huge proponent of communication because you know, I always tell people if you can read, uh, write, and speak, you're going to be successful. If you can do all three, you're going to be really successful. You know, you're headed for a, a, bright, a positive, bright future. Uh, my time at Coastal, uh, I got here in 2003, um, ended up graduating in 2008. It was the, the time of my life. Um, I met all my best friends, uh, met great coaches, um, great administration. Um, it, was, it was just too good to be true. I threw the javelin. I was, I was the spear chucker, and I uh, never in a million years would have thought I I got a scholarship to, to go to college for track and field. Uh, my major was uh, business marketing, um, and I currently um, work for a, a respiratory company, Reliable Medical, um, um, as their sales rep. I recently got married um, to my wife, Brittany. Um, she was born and raised in Conway. It is an unbelievable honor. People that chose me over everybody else that was here at the university. And I appreciate um, what Coastal has done for me, um, the knowledge that, the, that I've learned from Coastal, um, and everything that they've done for me. Oh man, what a great honor it is. Uh, it's been a long time coming for me. Uh, it's something exciting. And, you know, it's not necessarily, I mean, obviously it's an achievement for me, but uh, personally I really feel like that this is an achievement that, that not only I earned, but my teammates as well as my coaches. And uh, you know, also the community that was behind this program, and uh, you know, President Ron Engel that had a vision to bring this program here to to be able to uh, start something like we started. And, uh, and, and you know, me and my uh, teammates were able to lay the groundwork for what it is today. To be able to to achieve something like this is definitely a great honor. I'm very privileged to be able to accept this uh, achievement. We got so many memories. I mean, that entire first year that we practiced, the entire year, no games, no nothing, just getting ready each and every day to go out there and bang against your teammates uh, for an entire year. And then the first year, the first game of the season against Newberry and uh, there in 2003, what a great memory that was to win the first game ever in, in the history of the program. You know, to be able to be a part of something for six years, the National Football League for six years, that's six more years than I ever thought I would be part of. Uh, looking back, you know, starting when I came to Coastal, uh, I don't even think I could complete a pass that first year we practiced. So to be able to play in the NFL for six years is definitely a great honor and something that I'll cherish and uh, hold dear to my heart for the rest of my life. Congratulations to all of our Hall of Fame inductees. Being healthy has a lot to do with our diet, so making good choices can make a big difference in how we feel and ultimately in our overall health. Two health promotion students teamed up with CCU campus chef Michael Reitman to create a healthy meal that can be prepared straight from their dorm room mini fridge. We're here for our senior project trying to make Coastal a healthier campus and we've brought a bunch of free samples for students. We have a lasagna, we have a salad and a dessert. We're doing this event to promote healthy eating on campus for students to get a better alternative um, instead of eating like mac and cheese out of the microwave. Our salad is kale strawberry salad and our lasagna, it's vegetarian, it's meatless 
and our brownies are zucchini brownies. I never had kale. I've ne well, I'm trying the kale now. I've never had it though. I don't know. I don't like green things. <laughs> or healthy things. Try it. Would you like this? I think so. <laughs> Most good. It is actually really good. Well, I've had a spinach and strawberry salad, but I think that actually had a better taste to it. Yeah, I was surprised. Because I, like I don't like mushrooms, but it was really good. These are just options that are simple. You can get all the ingredients at like Walmart right down the street and cook them within your own home. You can make them in like a microwave or a crock pot, something easy and fast um, when you're on like a schedule. It was incredible. The food was just very good. The kale and the strawberry complemented each other very nicely. Delicious. It's very good. I think it's awesome, especially promoting health on this campus. It's, especially on a college setting, it's very hard to eat healthy, so this is this is awesome. Healthy. Just ahead, see how students leave their mark on CCU's hometown. Here at Coastal Carolina University, we're not just building dreams, we're building the future with real hands-on experiences and a personal touch we prepare you for the real world and real success connect to your future and discover what coastal can offer you A way to demonstrate your Chanticleer spirit is by wearing teal. Once a year, CCU student organizations kick that concept up a few notches by invading CCU's hometown of Conway, armed with gobs of teal. The competition currently that we're taking part in is Paint the Town Teal. We are painting the town teal, and right now I am working on the last of our Chauncey. Everybody creates their own images, and we are trying to be the best image to show outside about our school pit spirit all together. Different organizations on campus come together and each have their own business to paint the front of. It brings the team together, and also it gives your team, like, it builds pride within your team and within the um, school. Just coming together and showing your love for Coastal and, like, kind of literally painting it on walls and windows. And displaying to Conway through different businesses the spirit of Coastal. It helps, I feel like it helps to rally not only the students of Coastal Carolina, but also the town people here of Conway. I do think it has improved our school spirit, and here's why. We had a contest several years back that we really got into in a major way and that has built up spirit, 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 spirit so that we got to where we are now. It's about branching out everywhere, getting everybody involved. And I think it's really great that Coastal wants to bring community into our school. It really brings out to Conway that we're not just a bunch of college kids that just live here to go to the beach all the time. We actually do have school pride and we do show a lot of it. I think Conway loves Coastal and they love having us. I think it's just kind of bringing us closer to Conway. We have seen a lot of students hanging around in and around Conway since they started this, which is really great because we've been trying to marry Conway with CCU for quite a while. So this, I think, was definitely helps out with that. We all have the same kind of coastal pride and we all bring it out and show it here and also it gives the community a sense of pride because they see that Coastal's doing big things and that we have our school spirit displayed so it gives them school spirit. It's just all just to show how much we love our school. Nothing makes us prouder or more excited than hearing great stories of how our alumni are succeeding. Martha Hun paid a visit to a recent CCU Athletic Hall of Famer, Josh Hoke, to learn about his life in Charlotte, North Carolina, and his business venture. We are in Charlotte, North Carolina at CrossFit Mountain Island, and I have Josh Hoke, 2006 communication graduate of Coastal Carolina University, here with me, and this is his gym. 
And one of the cool things, Josh, about this gym is that you, you're feeling the teal back here. <laughs> it's funny, I always, uh, yeah, when I, if I said I forever had my own business that was gonna be teal, it's funny because I had my fiance and I, Kelly, we, uh, we co-own this place together, we run this place. She's a Wyoming grad, so okay. yellow and brown. Not exactly the prettiest combination of colors. They've kind of grown on me, but I told her there was no way we're painting this place yellow and brown. It looks so nice in here. Um, CrossFit Mountain Island. Yep. And so I don't know anything about CrossFit training. I have heard of it a lot and I know it's incredible, uh, but I haven't heard a lot about it. So start first by telling us, what do you do in here? We do everything in a group class setting. Um, and that, that's pretty much the standard throughout CrossFit in, in the entire world is that, um, you know, we're to come in here and, uh, and push each other and work hard, uh, use it for an hour is what our other classes are gonna be. And that's usually the standard throughout the industry as well. But people are gonna get in here, push each other, uh, derive motivation from being right next to somebody else. It's a really cool thing. Um, it's really rewarding as a coach to see people, you know, do things on a daily basis that, you know, they probably never thought they could do. And maybe you even inside didn't necessarily think they could do either you know but because you're in that that environment that atmosphere of motivation and excitement you know people do some cool stuff so well Josh was actually in the on the inaugural team for Coastal Carolina University football and you had the first kickoff for the first game that CCU ever played, which is such a cool memory. You know, it was kind of cool uh, to, to come visit campus, see what it was about, but then buy into this vision of what Coastal could be. And then you start thinking about all the things you're going to get to do. You know, we're going to be the first team. Somebody's going to be the first person to throw a pass. Somebody's going to be the first person to make a tackle. Somebody's going to be mm -hmm. the first person to, uh, to catch a pass, you know, and score a touchdown and all those things. And it was kind of cool, you know, who's going to be the first person to touch a football? So it was either going to be, it was funny because uh, Darnell Williams, who came in with me in 02, um, uh, receiver we had, we always went back and forth that first year in 02 when all we did was practice. And he and I would always say, one of us is going to be the first one. Uh, so <laughs> I, I can't remember if we won the opening kickoff and defer, or won the coin toss and deferred, or if we lost the coin toss and ended up kicking off. But either way, we kicked off to start the first game and it, it was awesome. kind of cool. It was, it was funny too because um, it, it, I always give my parents a hard time because they barely got in the stadium soon enough. They literally walked up the concourse just in time. They're standing at the bottom of the, the bleachers and saw me kick off. I mean, literally within seconds, they probably would have missed the whole thing. So, but it was, it was, it was kind of a cool memory to be able to say, yeah, I was the first one to touch a football. You know, you were a communication major uh, and you also were a writer then for mm -hmm. years for yep. the Sun News. In fact, you covered coastal athletics uh, as a, a Sun News journalist. And uh, life has twists and turns, doesn't it? Even though I'm not a journalist anymore, I'm still wired that way. I still think, you know, I, right. I was always a huge believer that you could open the phone book and point to a name and you could write a story about that person. You had yeah. to figure out what it was, but right. there was always a story. Right. Um, and I still am the same way. You know, I enjoy getting to know our members. You know, our concept, the business model is a little different. We're not. You know, once we have 100 members in here, we'll stop. You know, we're not going to add any more members. You know, that'll be it for us because I want the ability to develop a personal relationship with people. Mm -hmm. and, and for us, you know, I really get to the point now where I know our members, I know what they do, I know where they've been, I know what their kids do. You know, uh, now it's to the point where we actually had a member the other day come in and tell us that before she even told her friends, she came in and told us she was engaged. So, you know, that, that made Kelly and I both know that, yeah. you know, we're creating the relationships that we need to. Well, Josh, thank you so much for taking time out. Uh, of your business life and your Charlotte living and time with your fiance to be with us. Appreciate you guys coming and checking the place out. You're the first, uh, first camera crew we've had in here. So I'm, I was happy to, uh, to show off the teal for sure. There are always tons of great events going on at CCU. Find out about them at coastal.edu slash cultural arts. And just in case you missed it, here were some great happenings over the past few weeks at CCU.
here at Coastal Carolina University. We're not just building dreams, we're building the future. With real hands-on experiences and a personal touch, we prepare you for the real world and real success. Connect to your future and discover what Coastal can offer you. media community is growing quickly. Our social media coordinator, Brent Reeser, recently harnessed their power to help solve a crime. Welcome to the CCU Social Circle. I'm Brent Reeser. There are many reasons why I like my job. I interact with the coastal community on a daily basis. I watch fabulous user-generated content flood our channels by the minute. I proudly observe the continual growth of our social audience with each post we put out. But there is something that makes my job even more fulfilling. Whenever the opportunity presents itself to rally the coastal community around a common cause, it validates why I do this type of work. Last month, such a situation presented itself. On the morning of November 12th, it was discovered that our Welcome to Teal Nation sign that greets traffic on 544 was missing. A spirited and distinguishing symbol of ours had been taken overnight, leaving an eyesore of a void. Something needed to be done. In a meeting with university communication officials and Department of Public Safety Chief David Roper, the decision was made to depend solely on social media to get our sign back. Our strategy was mapped out and within minutes after the meeting, we had posts out on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram notifying our audience about the theft and asking for any information that would lead to the recovery of our sign. This was when you took over. The news was met with outrage, but also with determination to locate it. Within minutes of our social media blitz, the post that we sent out had circulated throughout the whole coastal community. Our tweet immediately received 51 retweets. Students took our Instagram image and reposted it on their feeds. Our sign recovery effort had gone viral, but would it be enough to bring it back home? It was. Within hours, an individual came forward and told our public safety department exactly where the missing sign was located. After officers conducted an investigation and recovered the sign, we were able to announce the good news via social media the next day. It wasn't long before our Welcome to Till Nation sign was reinstalled on 544. The power of social media was on full display that day. Who knows what would have happened if we used a different medium to get the word out. But because we have a dedicated social media following with a passion for this university, we achieved our objective. Talk about a major victory for Teal Nation. Robin, back to you. Thanks for watching Coastal Now, an inside look at CCU.